Hello YouTube, I'd like to share with you a presentation I gave at this uh, Gathering for Gardener um, mini event at, back in 2013 um, discussing single plate capacitors. So it was kind of a fun mini project I shared and the, um, the crowd at this mini Gathering for Gardener event that was hosted at a local tech shop thought it was interesting so I thought I'd put it into a video and share it. Also. Um, to some of the graphics for this presentation I got from the Tesla collection so um, it's been a really great resource for uh, finding Tesla articles from historical documents and magazines and uh, writing so um, for the Tesla fans that come to the U YouTube channel uh, check out Tesla collection you'll find a lot of interesting stuff so the single plate capacitor was something that I was interested in because it was used in some of the energy transmission schemes that was uh, that were proposed by Tesla in the late 18, early 1900s. Um, so what we have here is a couple illustrations of a, a single plate capacitor used in a circuit. So you have this, uh, this T1 as a terminal for some high frequency power source you have the, the high frequency currents going through a coil then a, a light is coupled into the magnetic field of the coil um, through a secondary coil and the currents f flow from the, um, the high frequency power source through the coil and then they s flow out into the plate um, this plate capacitor and they flow back through the coil so this single plate capacitor acts as a reservoir for the charge to flow. There's a few other illustrations um, from Electrical Review that was published in 1893 um, with um, information that Tesla supplied on some of his power transmission schemes and see you see here with the um, the high frequency power source is going through this um, type of transformer where the light bulb is coupled in and the light is off, but with the passive um, single plate capacitor, this provides um, a, a capacitance for the charge to flow through the coil, flow into this uh, capacitor plate. So there's a couple illustrations from 1893. Here is um, an illustration from the um, electrical experimenter, the True Wireless by Nikola Tesla and this is an, uh, a graphic from his article and he was trying to describe the principle of, sort of a single plate single terminal capacitance and how it could be used in a circuit so you have a high frequency alternator it sends power down the line through your um, load your application and the current flows out into the capacitance and then it can keep you know, flowing back and forth from alternator to capacitor through the load so you have a single conductor a path of energy transmission and it was analogous there's a sort of a pneumatic analogy here where you have a piston it pushes fluid through this um, this this frictional tube that would that's representative of the light bulb some sort of friction device and then uh, the fluid expands out into this elastic reservoir so it's a place for the fluid to flow and, and as the pi um, piston retracts fluid can flow out of that um, elastic reservoir and back through the load. So this was uh, the um, pneumatic analogy of the uh, what a single plate capacitor uh, would do in an electrical circuit. And so these are um, some calculations you can do uh, for the capacitance of different types of objects. So I was going to compare this a sphere. So if you take a sphere um, that has a, a capacitance, you can you can sort of um, imagine this as you know um, two nested spheres. So the inner sphere would be one plate of the capacitor, and the outer sphere would be the, the other plate of the capacitor. And you can imagine a scenario where the the diameter of the outer sphere keeps getting larger and larger and larger. Um, to a point where that outer sphere, the distance from the inner sphere to the outer sphere would be infinite. So you can think of the single plate capacitor as uh, a capacitor where the other plate is ground at infinity. And 
which is kind of an interesting uh, mathematical point of view and that's why I thought the people at the Gathering for Gardner might be interested and it's not something that's commonly discussed in um, electrical circuit theory because it's sort of a unique application so I I was trying to, to uh, design a better single plate capacitor than you would be able to achieve with just a sphere so I'm looking at the formulas so you can calculate the capacitance for a uh, a spherical object it's equal to 4 pi times the free space permittivity constant times the uh, radius and you can calculate the capacitance for a just a circular disk which would be you know, an easy to fabricate um, capacitive terminal and so I built some um, some of these plates so th these are CAD drawings but I actually built these um, these physical objects these discs I cut them out on a laser and my thinking was that a, a sphere of a similar um, radius would have a 22 picofarad capacitance whereas a disc would have a 14 picofarad capacitance and my thinking was I could have a higher capacitance uh, terminal if I were to stack plates as opposed to use a spherical terminal and so what I did was I stacked these these were um, aluminum coated these were cut out they were wood and they were cut on the laser but they were then covered with aluminum foil uh, with adhesive spray and so my expectation was I'd just be able to stack some plates and uh, they would add up to t uh, 42 picofarad whereas the sphere would be 22 picofarad but what I found was the um, with these terminal plates is it's with a certain distance between them um, so the electric field on one plate canceled out a little bit of the electric field on the other and it reduced the total charge they could store so I made measurements um, at different spacing intervals so a single um, plate aluminum plate had a 14 picofarad capacitance I expected when I stacked three of them you'd get a 42 picofarad capacitance but what I wound up with uh, was 27 picofarads I increased the spacing to 0.2 meters and I got 33 picofarads and then I finally achieved the 42 picofarad that I expected in my calculations by spacing them um, exactly one diameter 0.4 meter um, in distance from each plate so with a, um, a distance spacing between the plates equal to one uh, diameter the fields no longer cancels and interfered with one another so I had my 42 picofarad um, capacitance value but I had to achieve this by spacing the plates farther and farther so I thought that was kind of interesting I have here the uh, measurement curve so this would be the number of discs and this would be the capacitance value and this is sort of what I, what I calculated not anticipating that the um, you know the proximity of the discs to each other would um, inhibit their ability to store charge and then um, I have the different uh, diameter spacing so once you have one diameter of spacing um, there's no longer a canceling effect with the, the fields around the discs and um, this is the values for uh, 0.5 diameter spacing and 0.25 diameter spacing so and then this red line here is the 22 picofarads um, that um, just having a, a um, conductive sphere would achieve so that is the single plate capacitor presentation and uh, yeah I'm interested to hear what the uh, audience thinks about it so uh, give me some feedbacks uh, in the comment section and thanks bye